Today, I'm going to share with you one of the biggest challenges faced by no content and low content book publishers and how this can be helped with an app called Grammarly and so help increase sales and royalties. Now, if you've not been here before, my name's Paul Miles and I do videos on how to make it, keep it and grow it and that's your money I'm talking about. And if you do like videos like that, then please do give it a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button and smash that notification bell to receive notifications of when I produce more videos like this. Okay, so if any of you have seen any of my book review videos, and I'll leave a link to the playlist above, you'll know that one of the biggest issues I find with other people's books are around the title, subtitle and description and that's namely with the grammar, punctuation and spelling and these can be a major issue when it comes to trying to sell your books because when there are issues around these areas it can make a book look unprofessional, it can make a book look cheap and can reduce sales or in most cases prevent them from selling at all. But the good news is there is a solution or there is a tool that can help anyway and that's an app called Grammarly. Now this first came onto the market around 2009. It's available as an iOS and Android download. It's available as a desktop app for Mac and Windows and it's also available as a plugin for Chrome, Safari and Firefox. And today I'm going to show you the Chrome plugin. Now it's free to download. I'll leave the link below by the way to, to Grammarly so you can just uh, go there and you get the option here to download the plugin for free. There are a number of plans, free, premium and business. After I've shown you um, some examples of how it can be used, I look a little bit more depth on the different plans, the pricing and features and, and who they're best suited for. But I think for most people, the free plan would be the most suitable because that will help with the main issues of spelling, punctuation and grammar. So when you do download it, you're presented with this example page and how it can be used. But all you need to do is just open up a new document and we have this blank workspace area here. Now you can write directly into here and then copy and paste that into your KDP platform or you could just write it on Microsoft Word or whatever, uh, copy paste it into here, see if there's any um, issues that need correcting and then copy paste that into KDP. Now apparently this can be used also um, with some web interfaces. Now I did try it directly within the KDP platform but it didn't appear to work. So the only way to get it to work would be to copy and paste your uh, titles, descriptions, subtitles into the web interface and, and correct it from there. Now you will need an internet connection for it to work but it is very simple to use. Now what I'm going to do is use some of the books that I've reviewed on this channel as examples and also a few books that I'm due to review also as examples because there's some um, good issues there that we can demonstrate. Now if you've already published books, this is a great way to go and get your descriptions, title, subtitles, go into Grammarly, copy, paste them and make any corrections. Now unfortunately with the title or subtitle you may have to republish your book. I have been told that it's possible to email KDP support and change the subtitle if you want to change that. I've not done it myself but it's worth a try. If that doesn't work, then it may be that you need to republish your book. But if you're not making any sales on your book, that doesn't really matter. So let's have a look at this first example. So we've got this book here, which I reviewed in my last video. Again, link above. And I'll just copy the description and paste it into Grammarly. And it's pretty quick. And you'll see it has these uh, number of words highlighted and over on the right hand side it will tell you what the issue is. Now we can see here it says mood space exclamation mark it says uh, improperly spaced punctuation. So it's just a case of clicking on the word on the right hand side and it will change it so it will correct the punctuation there. Click on the next word now it says here that this the word vacations shouldn't be plural it should be singular so we can correct that there as well. Now it says there's an error here and it says that this word 
may be redundant and we don't need it. So let's just click on that and let's see if it sounds right. The different levels are separated from each other and the solutions are grouped at the end of the pages. Yep, that sounds um, good to me. And again, it looks like we've got a similar issue with the space between the word and the exclamation mark. So you click on that. So then you could just copy this, go to your KDP dashboard, paste it into there, and you've got a description that looks and sounds better. Now, I have, in my previous videos on reviews, I have said how important this is, particularly when, you've, when your markets are mainly the UK, Canada, and the US, where you've got a lot of people whose English is their first language. Any slight errors can really stand out like a, like a sore thumb. Okay, let's take a, another example. So this is another book I recently reviewed, and we're going to take this description, copy, paste it into Grammarly and see if any errors come up. Now there's only a couple here. One again is a spacing between the book and the exclamation mark. So we'll just click on that to correct. And again, an issue with a space between the word and the full stop. Now this is quite interesting because I received a phishing email the other day and it looked quite, quite genuine. And it was about the taxation of my car, my vehicle. And I sort of quickly scanned and read it. But what gave it away was the spacing between a word and a comma. Normally there wouldn't be a space, but this time there was a space between the word and that comma. And I knew straight away that this was a, a scam phishing email. So if these scammers had have used Grammarly, they may have got away with it. Anyway, that's just a little side story. So here's a book I'm uh, due to review. So this time I'm going to put in the title. And here we've got a number of issues here, which I could see straight away when I looked at the title, and that is the lack of space between the words and the commas. So all you need to do is to click each one, like so, and correct those issues there. Let's have a look at the, the next example. Okay, so this time we're going to be looking at the description. Let's go to Grammarly. And here we have, again, another issue with a space between the word and the comma. This seems to be a common problem, um, particularly with authors and publishers that don't have English as their first language. And there's also an issue here between the space between size and that semicolon. So we'll just click on the word, correct it, click, correct. And you can see it's quite simple. Click, now that's interesting, I'll just undo that. Now it's deleted the word bleed on there. So it's, it's treated that as one word and it thinks it should be completed. So goes to show you these, these apps are not all 100%, but it's better than, uh, than nothing. And also I noticed it's not picked up this issue here. This um, issue of bleed paperback should have a space there. So it's not picked up that. So. Spelling, I think most of the time, I found when I was using it about 90% of the time it was correct, but you can see in this case, um, it does pick up the wrong issue. And then the last book I'm gonna show is this one that I'm due to review again. So I'm gonna copy the description, paste it in place. And here I think we've got an issue with spelling. I've got this word here, non-grams, should be nonograms. Now it says griddlers, unknown words. So that's fine, we can leave that and Japanese should be capitalized. And it says lover should be plural, lovers. So that's corrected that quite nicely. So you can see how useful this is. Now something it won't do, and that is with the capitalization of things like titles and subtitles. So if I try and see if we've got an example here of what I mean. Here we have Happy Halloween coloring book for kids. Now, most of the words here should be capitalized like coloring book, kids, fun, beautiful, designs is capitalized correct, correctly, great, sketch, pages, let your kids, all those words should, should be capitalized. Now I can understand what the issue might be for a lot of people and it's knowing which of the words should be capitalized and which shouldn't. Now I have made a short list of the words in your title and subtitle that shouldn't be capitalized. And I'll leave that list below in the description. And it's short words like the, and, with, of, a, to, for, 
Those are the most common words I think you would be using in your title and subtitle, which you shouldn't be capitalising, and the rest of the words should have a capital letter. So that's just a, a little guide for you there. Now, this comes on to the next bit with the Grammarly app, because, as I said, there are three different plans. You've got free, premium and business. Now, business we don't really need to take any notice of, but... If you're a writer, author, if you have any other maybe jobs as a writer, then premium might be more suited to you. Now, I have read that premium can help with capitalizations, but I'm not sure it would help with the capitalizations that we've just mentioned in the title and subtitle. But you can see here, if we just quickly scroll down some of the features, premium can help with readability consistency of the writing, the tone of the writing, and also sentence variety as well, among others. But I think for most authors and publishers, the free version should be enough. Now, in terms of pricing, the free, as it suggests, is free and gives the functions I've just shown. If you wanted to go for the premium option, that starts at $11.66 a month. We can see here, now this is in pounds, uh, and that's eleven dollars. Was it eleven dollars sixty six? As if you pay for it all in one go for a year, quarterly. So for three months would be fifteen pounds seventy, which I think must be probably around high seventeen eighteen dollars. And monthly is probably around the twenty seven dollars a month mark. So it's not cheap. But if your business depends on writing or you're having really serious issues with writing your titles, descriptions, then this may be something to look at. And even, you know, maybe just trial it for a month, see if it is something that works for you. So the main features of this app are, it will check your spelling, grammar, punctuation. If you pay for the extras, there'll be some capitalization corrections, looking at sentence structure, tone, voice, uh, consistency. It's fast. It's easy to use. You can get your titles, subtitles and description looking professional, give your book that professional look. And overall, as a result, the most important thing, allow you to make more sales and collect those lovely royalties. But what I would do is just give the free version uh, a go first. It's easy to download the, the plugin and, and get cracking with that pretty much straight away. So that's it. That's a useful tool there as part of your overall publishing arsenal of tools. So if you did like the video, found it useful, then please do give it a thumbs up. If not, give it a thumbs down. But please make sure you hit the subscribe button and smash that notification bell to receive notification of when I produce more videos like this. And until next time, goodbye.